Hello, I'm back. Um, start part two of this. Um, I have some photos to show you, and I'll show you this one, and then I'll show you the rest later. This right here is a picture of us girls. That's my older sister, Kathy. That's me. That's Nancy, Susie, and Lisa's up there in the middle. Yep, that's us. That's the five girls. I couldn't find any of the boys. I couldn't find any of my dad either. But I do have some older pictures that I will share at the end. And one of them is uh, painting my um, um, cousin, my older cousin did, of um, my mother's home when they were children. So I'll show that to you at the end of their house and stuff. Um, as I was saying about my childhood, um, my um, going through school and stuff was really unremarkable. Um, I went to um, South Street School for elementary. Um, then I started um, school in uh, junior high. It was at Bennett. Then when we moved to the north end of the town, um, I went to school. It was Wilder. And I went there from 7th to ninth grade. And then I went to Piqua Central High School. And um, I graduated from there in 1973, which is where I met my husband, um, the girls' dad. Um, we lived across the street from each other. And um, I would attribute, you know, I, I, as a teenager, I was shy when I went through high school and stuff. Um, always in... Um, you know, one of those kids that was in, were actually all the way through school, I was one of those kids that was there, but did not make a big explosion to be known. Um, I have to excuse, I can't find my other glasses. I had to get an older pair of glasses to put on. And, uh, yeah, I was just one of those kids that, I wasn't popular. I wasn't what they used to call hoods. I was just those medium inner kids. And uh, I was older than my husband or my ex-husband. I was 18 or when I first met him or was, well, interested in him. I was 17. And he was... Um, I'm four months older than him, so he would have been like 16. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, I just, we just stayed together, you know. Um, we explored each other together, as teenagers will do. Um, when I was 18, I graduated in 1973. And, um, we, he and I had always talked about, you know, well, like I said, when you're a girl back then, you were taught, and maybe that's why I didn't try to excel in school, because it was put in my head that you, um, you get through school because your prime purpose is going to get married, have children, stay at home, and take care of them. And so that's basically what I did. Um, I got married to, um, his name is Joey. I got married to him October 27, 1973. Uh, I was 18, he was 17. Um, we had to, our parents had to sign us. We had to go down and get our marriage license our parents had to go along and sign the papers. You know, I wouldn't do that with my children. I, 
that is just like ridiculous. If you can't sign your own marriage certificate without your parents, you don't need to get married, right? But that was back then. They did that. And, uh, of course, I started working. And, um, I don't know. Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah. And um, I was, I started working. He was still in school. So I worked the entire time he went to school. And he was in this morning program. And in the afternoon, he would work. So, um, yeah, I got him through that. Um, and his graduation. You know, we were entirely too young. I would, I was most likely more ready to stay married. He wasn't. You know, um, I can remember I'd go, we'd get, we had this little apartment uptown, and I would go to sleep, and um, then I'd find out that he was outside sitting on the car watching people drive by. His friends went by, and he'd get in the car with them, and he'd drive around town with them. Basically, he was still a teenager, you know. And still wanting to do stuff like that. Um, I, as um, as a uh, as a teenager, I do believe my ex husband loved me because you know at that age, yes, you do love the girl you fell in love with. You know, you met, you fell in love with, and everything. But I don't really think he was truly in love with me. I don't think anybody I've married, and I've been married twice, has truly loved me. Um, and we have three daughters. I have uh, Robin, my oldest, and uh, she's in her 40s. Susan, my middle daughter, she's in her 40s. Now, my youngest daughter is Michelle, and she's 38. So, um, you know, I have three beautiful daughters. I wouldn't trade them for anything. Um, I have uh, seven grandsons, and I have one granddaughter. And I wouldn't trade them for anything. I do believe, I do wish that if I... At, when I was 18, I wish I would have took a different avenue. I wish I would have had that initiative, that push. Although, I, my mom didn't push us. You know, I graduated. Uh, there was three of us out of seven kids of my mom and dad that graduated. So, um, and I was one of the first to graduate from college. So, um, but I graduated that after I was divorced. Then I graduated college. But I wish I would have took the initiative in my own life to explore and went out and went to college or did something with my life other than to get married too young. Um, <clears throat> my children had a happy life. You know, I was married to my ex-husband for nine years. And, like I said, I don't think he was really all that committed. And, till he got dissatisfied with me, dissatisfied with, I don't even really think he wanted children. Uh, I do remember he had told me one time when we got divorced, well, if, if the girls had been boys, I would have stayed with you. What an ass. What an ass. Um, you know, and he just um, met this person. He used to go to this bar after work, cash his check, and then he'd come home, and he had met this person there. And, of course, that's where my whole world come crashing down. Um. We had lived out in the country, and he had moved us in town. And we had this, um, a nice house. It was a two-story house. It was nice. 
And I don't think we'd been living there very long before he decided that he had found somebody else. And, of course, you know, being a woman who didn't want to lose her husband, you know, I had did some rash things. Like, I had parked my station wagon. I found out where his girlfriend lived, and he was living with her. Parked my station wagon on the side of this one street, and I had keys to his truck. I took off with his truck. Uh, we had a camper together, which she was living in, and, um, yeah, it was a dark time in my life because there were times I would get my kids out of bed. It would be four o'clock in the morning, and I would put them, I'd make a bed in the back of the station wagon and put them in there, and they'd go to sleep, and I would drive around looking for him. Uh, my neighbors thought I had a, a paper route. But, you know, I had lost my mind there for a minute. You know, that's not something. I thought I got married forever. I wasn't even married 10 years. Basically, I don't even think I was married long enough to have any claim to anything other than my three children, which I was very possessive over. And um, I didn't trust him with my kids. They were my kids. I didn't have these girls for his girlfriend. So, you know, he left, and I couldn't stay in that house. Um, he had told me, well, you can go on welfare. Well, yeah, that's what his girlfriend had said, because that's the kind of family we were. No good. And... Um, and I did. I got on Metropolitan. I found an, a smaller house that was cheaper. And me and the girls moved in it. I was on food stamps with them. And uh, because when we went through it, he only had to pay $45 for three children a week. And which he didn't give me. He was never responsible that way. All he cared about was his self and what he wanted to do and so I learned to live on my own take care of my kids take care of the bills take care of the money bring my kids up best I could and they never wanted for anything um, I always wanted to be a nurse um, even when I was in high school we had taken a trip down to Dayton, Ohio, uh, to the, um, there was a school for um, LPNs down there. And I had taken a trip with some of my classmates in my senior year to go down there and visit it. What I should have did was I should, if I would had that initiative, I should have went for it then. I really, I should have. But... As my children got older, I moved to another house. Um, like I said, I had uh, uh, metropolitan housing, and I found a bigger house. Lived over there, and that's when I decided I was going to go back to school. Uh, I went to Edison State Community College. Uh, I started in 19... Uh, I, I don't know. I started in 19... I guess it was 1988 because my one my oldest daughter when she was little she had said well we can just go on welfare like you did and I thought no you know I've got to show them this is not what you do so that's when I decided to go back to school and get a career and which I chose um, an RN program that was new when I went through there uh, the nursing program at that time at this college was they were the darlings of the college. And at that time, there was a nursing shortage. And uh, I graduated in a class that was fairly, the program was fairly new. I would say that I graduated like uh, in the first 10 classes they had there, which it was a two-year program. So I got an Associates of Applied Science degree. Um, 
and uh, I started working, taking care of my kids, giving them the best I could. Um, I had boyfriends off and on, but you know, I never committed to them. I was committed to my children. Um, and my heart wasn't committed to anybody but my ex-husband. And uh, I guess I never found anybody that I felt measured up to him. I trusted him and, and uh, I didn't trust anybody else. And yeah, he, he did me wrong. He did. Um, and then he went on his way and he more or less forgot his children as well. Which has caused them problems. Um, you know, my children, my girls, they, they see me taking care of everything. And so therefore that's how they grew up to be. They took charge. They paid the bills. Um, they handled the money. And they more or less ruled the house. Because that's what they seen that a woman does. A woman takes care of things. They didn't rely on a man. And if they had a man with them, they still took care of things. So, um... Yeah, I had some trials and tribulations through that. Uh, it wasn't always easy. Um, I think sometimes the reason why I don't, you know, I've, I've got depression, I have anxiety, and I'm also the person that feels they have to be a fixer. If my children or my grandchildren have problems, I feel I have to fix it for them. I have to help, which drives you crazy, you know, to be a fixer. Um, I've always helped my children out. I've never asked them back for anything. Um, if I gave them money, I gave them money. I didn't expect repayment. That's not what parents do. At least that's what I felt. And if there was a problem with them, I took them in, even after they were older, and helped them, you know, get them back on their feet. And, uh, and I just still get older and older. Uh, you know... When I was a nurse, I, I made pretty good money. Not a lot, but I was used to having what I wanted. Buy new cars. Um, shopped. You know, I had, right at my fingertips, I had, I had, think, you know, I had the money. I could do what I wanted. As, um, now... I'm not used to this life. You know, the little nest egg I had, I lost because I had to live on it until I could get Social Security Disability. And yes, they tried to find a job that I could work, which that is part of their job to do that. But there was nothing, there was not a job out there it would pay that I had gotten that I could work. So, you know, you, uh, you know, just work as long as you can. I encourage that highly. Work as long as you can. Because once you don't, you have, they base what you get on your, your pay schedule. Basically, your last pay schedule. And that's what you get for a month. And so now, you know, like I've told you, you know, I, I have, I get paid monthly and I pay my bills and that's it. I go to pantries. Um, I just, uh, I guess I can't handle it that. 
I once could have whatever I wanted, and now I can't. You know, it's kind of hard when you can't buy birthday and Christmas for your grandchildren. But, um, that's my cycle. I hope that you can at least understand me since you know something about me. You know, I had all my children back in the uh, 70 and uh, 76 and 78 and uh, 80. Three girls. But, um, yeah, that's how my life worked out. I don't know if this helps you understand me more, but uh, that's how it all worked out with my life. From a child, traumas, to now. And so when I wanted to start YouTube, it was a dream that I tried to express things. Yes, I get off track sometimes on things. I do. But I try to find subjects that I think might interest you. Um, I might not talk as animated as other people on YouTube. I definitely don't, you know, I know there's a lot of people that eat on YouTube and that attracts a lot of attention. Because I do too, but I'm not going to do that. Um, you know, um, I don't know, hello, or is anybody out there, you know, let me know. I mean, if there's something you want me to tell you or talk about, let me know. That would really help me. Um, and if you've enjoyed this two parts about me. Um, like, subscribe, comment, and hit the bell. And uh, you'll be notified if I put anything else up. So now I want to show you the pictures I have. This one is my dad's mother. That's what she looks like. She's wearing an old costume dress. That's the way they dress. She's very beautiful, and I cherish this picture. He always had this hanging in his bedroom. Beautiful woman. She died of cancer very young after having, um, I'd say, at least 10 kids. Some had died. And, but my dad was her oldest, her first boy. But probably one of, he wasn't the oldest. No, there was girls older than him. So that's my grandmother, Snyder. I never met her. She died way before I came into, into existence. Now this is my mother. And uh, at the time her picture was taken, her name was Opal Thompson. She was age 25, and this picture was taken in 1947 in Piqua, Ohio, at the Fort Piqua Hotel. This is my mother. Pretty, huh? And these are her parents. I cherish this, too. That's my grandpa. His name was Ofa. And this is my grandmother. Her name was Bertha. This is my mom and dad's parents. Like I said, I don't have any pictures of my dad. Uh, when they died, you know, pictures were split up and people got them. And um, you got what you got. Now this picture, my... Uh, Oldest cousin, 
he uh, painted it. But this was a place my mother lived uh, with her parents, her grand, her her father's grandmother and dad, and his and their her siblings. But this is where they lived. It's a small house, but you know, my mom said they always had a wonderful time. They played out in the yard. They played what they call uh, back in this creek. They called it Hoopy Hollows, and they played back there in the the woods. And um, of course, they had chores, but uh, their mom, her mom, and. Uh, my mother's grandmother, they uh, took care of the house and stuff. Oh, and my grandma had babies. My grandfather's mother named them all. And, uh, you know, my grandpa, he was in, uh, he worked, um, he was a farmer. He also worked on the railroad in Bradford, Ohio. Um, and, uh, my grandfather, uh, my mom has talked about him and how he would, um, I think what he had was, after hearing him talk about it, he either had Alzheimer's or he had dementia. Because he would take off walking down the lane, she said, and they would have to follow him down the lane. And this is when they were little kids, and they'd have to turn him around and direct him back to the house. Um... My grandparents, they, uh, and uh, my great-grandparents, um, they had a store down in Dayton. Um, it would be like a grocery store or something. And they were down there in the 1913 when the flood happened. And uh, they moved back up in this area. Not to that house, but they moved up to this area. They moved in that place when um, my mother's siblings and her were um, still little kids. Like I said, they used to go run all over the place. They had such imagination. Uh, they went and they played in the woods and there was a creek and they called it Hoopy Hollows. Uh, my mom, she, uh, she would draw these uh, people and uh, she... Uh, She's pretty good at that. And she also liked to write. And I, a lot of that drawing and writing has filtered down through us. Um, my brother, he had wrote a book uh, about life down south and stuff. And it was interesting. It really was. And I think that's where his heart is because that's where he lives. He lives in Louisville, Kentucky. And he uh, thrives down there. I'm, I, I've been born, I was born in Pickle, Ohio. I was raised here. And I've n never felt the need that I want to leave here. A lot of people would say, why do you want to live in Ohio? Why not? You know, you have what you want here. I mean, we're pretty strong up here. You have the seasons the way they should be. Um, you got spring, you got summer, you got fall, you got winter. And sometimes you got summer and sometimes you end up, you don't know what kind of clothes to wear. You could be wearing shorts one day and you could be wearing a coat and long pants the next. That's a high for you. Um, and we do some strange things up here, you know. Uh, some people call uh, Coke and Pepsi and root beer and stuff soda. We call it pop. Um, we have, my mom, she would make fluffy dumplings. But when she, what um, that was the northern thing. Dumplings from the north were fluffy. In the south, 
dumplings are flat and um, about an inch to a half an inch wide and sometimes they're long sometimes they're cut in squares well my mom called the flat dumplings Popeye and that's what we always called it uh, my mom used to make hamburger Popeye that came from uh, my dad uh, his mother made it and you just you make the dough you roll it out you uh, boil potatoes um, and onions you fry ham well you fry hamburger with the onions and then you boil the potatoes and you drain them you mash the potatoes and you add the hamburger and the onions to it and then uh, the dough that you cut you cut in squares and then you put a pocket of that um, potato hamburger mixture in the middle of it and you pinch it up and you make a dumpling but my mom always called it my dad they always called it hamburger Popeye then you would have a pot of um, tomatoes and um, my mom also put her potato water in it, but it would be red, and she'd drop them little dumpling things filled in that pot and cook them. Now, I was a kid, that was the worst thing. I hated it when she put that bowl of that dump there, dumpling. But uh, the more you ate it, you know, the next day was better, it'd break up. And, um, you know, my grandmother, she had a lot of children. She died young, but that's something, you know, hard times. They were strict Catholics. She had the flour. She had the potatoes. She probably had the meat and the onions. She had the tomatoes and stuff. And that's the meal she put together for her family. And it's good. It really is. But um, enough about me. I hope you understand me more. Uh, you know more about me. Like I said, come back some more, enjoy your day, and find something that makes you happy. And um, I will talk to you again. Bye.